Welcome back to Encore's Time Master. In this video I'm going to be talking about the upgrade modules, in particular the invoice module. The module upgrades are what Apple calls an in-app purchase and what it does is add additional functionality to Time Master that can be purchased. So for the limited subset of people that need these additional features we'll charge for that instead of raising the price of the whole app. So if you wanted to buy a module you would tap on the purchase button through the iTunes store and pay through it through the iTunes and then when you come back you'll have the extra invoicing options. Okay so I'm gonna jump over to the setup screen since the first thing we'll need to do after we install the module is set up this invoicing setup options. So we'll tap on that. Okay the first thing is the description font size. This is the font size that's in the body of the invoice and we basically have three sizes we have 8, 9, and 10. 10 is the normal font size of, the in of all the rest of the text on the invoice but if you want to squeeze a lot of information in there without making your invoice too large you can go down to a small font size such as 9 or 10. I want to experiment with this a little bit. Okay the next thing is the description fields. In the description area you can also pick certain items to display in that area so I might want to have the project uh, description print on the invoice I don't want to have the codes or anything but I do also want to have the reference and purpose which are the notes for time entries and expenses you can also rearrange these if you want them in a different order save that okay the header there's two types of headers we can have the basic type is text and you can have that position for left, right, or center and preview and what you'll do in here is you'll put in your company name and you'll put in your company information which would, might be like your address and possibly your phone number and stuff like that. Now if we tap on the preview button you'll see the invoice template pop up and you can see that our heading with our name is a little bit bigger and then we have our address information below that. We also allow you to post in a graphic image. So if you have a real nice logo, you might want to add that instead. And ours is, we've already selected this, but uh, you can copy this from your photo album or copy and paste it from another area. Now we recommend that you don't use iTunes to sync a photo from your computer to through iTunes because it degrades the photo uh, and it just doesn't quite look as good so the best thing we found is that you email yourself your logo in an email and then you can tap on that and save it to your photo album or you can just do a copy on it and then a paste option will also show here so we'll just say that we put in our photo album and we select it and here's our image now if we preview the invoice we can see that we now have our nice graphic on the top. Now please keep in mind that the top 15 percent of the page is used for the logo so if you have a, a rectangular logo that's wide like this that usually works best or if you just have the graphic in a smaller area you might want to center justify it or left justify it depending upon what you like to see. Okay so we'll save out of the header section here uh, the next thing is my email. So if you're going to email invoices to yourself, you want to put in your email address here so it automatically fills in. Uh, the next invoice number is the next invoice whenever you automatically or manually generate an invoice. Now if you have had Time Master on your phone for a while now and you've already invoiced a bunch of things, this is what I'd recommend. Leave your invoice number at 1 to start with and uh, I'll come back and explain that and change, we'll change that after we've generated invoices for all our old stuff. Uh, we have multiple paper sizes in here depending upon where you are. If for some reason you need some specific paper size that's not on here, email us. And when you send your invoice you can have a couple things default in there. You can have on your subject line what your invoice is in the email and also if you want to have some sort of message in the text body along with the PDF invoice you put that here. 
Okay, and that pretty much wraps up the setup for invoicing. Okay, so let's go back to our modules. And now you'll see we have our, our options here. And if, you, like I said, if you were an existing customer and you've already invoiced, what I'd recommend is going in and doing an auto invoice and just pick something like the beginning of the year uh, so that you don't have any time entries before January 1st. We'll pick that and we'll say that we did our last bill in July, so we're going to save that as the stop date. Uh, you can pick a specific client if you want and we also have something called the minimum amount and what the minimum amount is for is say that for example you don't want to bill any customers that owe you less than fifty dollars so you could put that here and that way when it automatically generates an invoice it won't generate it until all the time ent and expense entries are over fifty dollars uh, just keep in mind that if you do that you'll want to keep a real old start date like January 1st in there so that when you're running this month after month it will pick up all those old entries and keep accumulating them until you cross your minimum amount threshold. Now I'm just going to clean this out here. Um, you can also use your quick pick buttons here to pick your dates and for last month when you get going. So we're going to generate now and it's automatically generating the invoices and as we can say, see it generated six invoices okay and now if we tap on the invoices row we'll see here's our six invoices now as you can see we've got our invoices starting at one and going up to six they increment automatically and let's just say that we know that we've uh, been paid for some of these well, we're just going to quick change their status here to billed or, or paid. Say this one was billed. Okay, so we change the status of all our older invoices here. Uh, we can also filter the invoice list by dates, our standard all dates, today, yesterday, and last month, etc. And we also have some other filters where you can filter on a specific client or status we have pending build paid or pending and build so if you just want to see everything that's not paid you'll want to pick the pending and build status is a good one see we have our two build ones up here now so we'll change this back to no filters you can also search for a certain invoice number by tapping on this and then you just start to enter the number and if it matches any one of the numbers in the string it will bring up that